Hi, this is Dan from userspice.com. If you've made it this far, congratulations. You have successfully downloaded, configured, and installed UserSpice. And so the question now is, now what? What can I do? Um, when you first log in, you are taken to this account.php page. It doesn't look like much right now because it is where you're supposed to create your project. Where do you want your visitors to come when they first log in? One of the things about user spice to remember is that it's designed to get out of the way. It's not designed to throw its branding in your face and to to make your website all about user spice. You can delete the name, you can do whatever you want. I want this project to be your project. And so when you get there, you have a, a button to get to the account home. And there's a few things you should notice. There's first of all is this nag at the bottom. I told you that would happen if you did not change the default recapture keys then you need to to get rid of this nag um, eventually those keys will stop working and if you don't do it then your site will stop working so it's really important that you get your own keys that you have control of um, there's these buttons across the top which is one way to do it or I also have the same buttons here in the menu whatever you like better you can use there's a, an account info button a sign out button um, but yeah, so let's take a look at the settings. So if you go to user settings, you can do the normal stuff, change your username, password. You can come over here to the admin configuration. This is really important. When you first set up user spice, you need to come in here and set your root folder for whatever it is. Um, otherwise, then when you sign out, you're going to be directed to the wrong page and maybe some other functions won't work. But come in here, give your thing a name, set your system email address, if you want to, you can come down here to your um, template and you can download other Bootstrap CSS files that will allow you to change the look and feel while still keeping the site responsive and all of that good stuff. If you come over here to admin users, you can see a list of all the users you have. You can come in here and see what level they are, all that kind of stuff. You can come to admin permissions where you can make different levels. So you can put um, something like, let's just go ahead and come in here and put noob we'll make a noob level and we come in here and right now um, you have a noob level and they have access to these files and say for some reason I want to give noob an access just to account PHP I can do that and now um, that's available here to the noob people so they can come in they can see everything the public can see they can see account.php but they cannot get to any of these settings they can't change their password or do anything like that um, so that's really important. You want to decide how many levels of access you want and what those levels can do. Um, when you come over here to admin pages, you can see which pages are available publicly. So I have this test one in here called New Login that right now is listed as private because I was working on it. But if I want the public to be able to get to that page, I can come in here and uncheck this and make it public and if I decide to make it private again I can come in here and say alright well I want it private but only administrators and teachers can view it not noobs so that allows you to have a lot more granular control over who can visit what based on those permission levels that you set over here um, and in essence that's what user spice does it allows you to manage your users and it allows you to decide who can visit what the next thing you need to know is how to build a project based on it. And so we're going to start that right now.